good morning all welcome to this lecture on induction disk type relay and its working principle so in the figure uh, which is drawn here it shows a metallic disk which can rotate because of a torque produced by two alternating fluxes uh, when interacted with the respective eddy currents on the disk we'll see how it is produced and the mathematical the, the corresponding mathematical expressions so basically the induction type relays are uh, also called as magnitude relays uh, these relays work on the principle of uh, induction motor uh, or an energy meter in these relays a metallic disk is allowed to rotate between the two electromagnets uh, the coils of the electromagnets are energized with the help of alternating currents in the sense that if there is a fault the fault current should be able to energize the um, energize the electromagnets uh, so that it, it it produces a torque and the disk should uh, rotate the torque is produced in these relays um, due to the interaction of Uh, alternating flux in uh, due to the interaction of alternating flux with eddy currents induced in the rotor or the induction disk um, by another alternating flux uh, the two fluxes have same frequency but they are displaced uh, in time and space as the interaction of alternating fluxes is the basic principle of operation of these relays these are not used for dc quantities or these are these are not used in dc circuits these are widely used for protection protective relaying um, in ac circuits so uh, now we'll see how torque is produced in this type of a relay so uh, here you can see in this figure let me switch off the eraser first okay here one minute uh, okay here we can see the metallic disk in which two fluxes are acting upon it and these two fluxes are alternating so initially the direction of flux is shown in this uh, by the downward arrow you can see here the downward arrow here and because of this the alternating currents applied to the uh, two electromagnets only produce these two alternating fluxes phi1 and phi2 phi1 and phi2 these two fluxes have same frequency but they have a phase difference uh, let us consider this phase difference as alpha um and uh, phi2 leads phi1 phi2 leads phi1 phi2 leads phi1 okay Uh, thus the two fluxes uh, can be mathematically expressed as phi1 is equal to phi1 m into sin omega t and phi2 is equal to phi2 into phi2 m into sin omega t plus alpha that is phi2 is leading phi1 by an angle alpha uh, these alternating fluxes cause induced emf in the rotor because these are these are time varying fluxes um, so it induces an emf uh, on the rotor or the induction disk and you know that the induced emf is uh, perpendicular to the flux so i am representing the induced emf as e2 for phi2 and e1 for phi1 okay now we assume that the parts of the rotor in which the rotor current uh, currents flow have negligible self inductance and hence the rotor currents are in in phase with the uh, respective induced voltages that means these induced voltages will produce some current which is in phase to the voltages so this is here this is some i2 and this is i1 okay now uh, because of these currents now you know that phi2 and i2 are perpendicular phi1 and i1 are perpendicular but phi1 and i2 are not perpendicular 
phi 2 and i1 are not perpendicular so they have components they have common components with respect to uh, so common vector components um, or contributions uh, uh, i mean between each other so they can interact so what happens here is phi 2 interacts with i1 and phi 1 interacts with i2 these are eddy currents i1 and i2 are eddy currents which are produced as a result of um, the produced emf or the induced emf on the induction disk because of the alternating flux that is produced by the fault current alternating fault current okay now so these alternating fluxes cause induced emfs in the rotor due to the induced emfs the eddy currents i1 and i2 are circulated on the disk so let's see the uh, direction of the circulating currents here we have i2 and here we have i1 now how to find the direction of i1 and i2 uh, so basically um, using right hand thumb rule we can say that the opposing flux this opposing flux this one this opposing flux the effect opposes the cause right so this is phi 2 opposition hmm? phi 2 opposed this is phi 1 opposed this is phi 1 opposed so the effect of phi 1 is i1 I the effect of phi 2 is i2 and that effect will oppose the cause that means i2 should produce a flux phi phi 2 opp which opposes phi 2 and i1 will produce a flux phi 1 opp which opposes phi 1 right the cause is phi 1 so it opposes phi 1 so um, in the right hand thumb rule uh, here basically your uh, thumb points upward because the opposing flux is upward right now what is the direction of the curled finger the curled finger is like in the clockwise direction so that is why i2 and i1 are in the clockwise direction here now let's see how force is produced right or torque is produced now uh, i already told you that phi 2 interacts with i1 and phi 1 interacts with i2 right so uh, in the section of the rotor uh, due to these alternating fluxes the instant considered to uh, show the various quantities is when both the fluxes are directed downwards and are increasing in magnitude both are in the downward direction and they are increasing in magnitude because it's it's part of the some half cycle okay now the induced eddy currents lag behind respective fluxes by 90 degree that is why it is shown as perpendicular now the induced voltages are proportional to the rate of change of fluxes and hence the eddy currents also are proportional to the rate of change of fluxes that means i1 is proportional to d phi 1 by dt and i2 is proportional to d phi 2 by dt okay now substituting this phi this phi 1 and phi 2 these phi 1 and phi 2 here what will you get here i1 is proportional to d phi 1 m sin omega t by dt right let me scroll down dt uh, which is proportional to phi 1 m cos omega t similarly here what happens is this is i2 right proportionality is similar to this but here it will become phi 2 m cos omega t plus alpha right the forces are produced due to the interaction of phi 1 with i2 and phi 2 with i1 so f1 is proportional to phi 1 i2 and f2 is proportional to phi 2 into i1 now what will be the direction of f2 and f1 here f2 will be like this and f1 will be like this so they are in opposite directions and they produce 
a torque which can rotate the metallic disc or the induction disc. So uh, to find the direction of force, you can use Fleming's left hand rule um, where the uh, pointing finger will be uh, corresponding to the flux and the middle finger will be corresponding to the current and then you can find the direction of the force. You can do that. Okay. Now, uh, the directions of F1 and F2, um, I mean, uh, we have already found the directions of F1 and F2 using uh, Fleming's left hand rule. And it can be seen that the two forces are acting in the opposite directions and hence the net force acting on the disc is proportional to the difference between the two forces. That means F, the resulting force F is proportional to F2 minus F1. Okay, now what is F2 and what is F1? We have already found that in terms of flux and current which are interacting between each other. So phi2 into I1 minus phi1 into I2. Now, substituting all these expressions and simplifying this, what we obtain here is, let's see, F is proportional to phi1, phi2, sin alpha. Phi1, phi2, sin alpha. Now, it is important to note that the net force acting on the disc is same at every instant. The action of relay under such force is uh, free from vibrations. And also, if alpha is zero, then the net force is zero and the disc will not rotate, right? So basically, what makes the phase difference between the two fluxes uh, is, is this alpha, this angle alpha, right? So there must exist a phase difference between the fluxes, then only the torque will be produced. The torque is maximum when the phase difference alpha is 90 degree. 90 degree. The direction of the net force, which decides the direction of rotation of the disc, depends on which flux leads the other. If phi1 leads phi2, then the direction of rotation is uh, in, in one direction. And if phi2 leads phi1, then it is in the opposite direction. So that is what uh, we have studied now with the principle and working of induction disk type relay. Thank you.